Welcome back to the Casual Marks Wrestling Podcast. Long time no chat, but it's WrestleMania season, which means it's our tri-annual predictions <laughs> video. And for anyone that doesn't know, I am your host, Reeves the Mark, and with me is my casual big brother, Ben. Also the co-host. Well, yeah. <laughs> you didn't say co-host, you said big brother. Anyways... We took a little hiatus. We the usual busy having. <laughs> I well, think you're I busy having, you know, a baby yeah. and whatnot. So that'll do it to baby you. wrestling. Hashtag baby wrestling. <laughs> but uh, I think the last time we did the WrestleMania predictions was uh, the COVID WrestleMania. So. Yeah, that was right before I was like, maybe I need a break from one watching of the greatest some wrestling. WrestleManias of all time until the Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar. Yeah, it, it genuinely was not that bad of a WrestleMania. I know that you don't like that match, but it genuinely wasn't that bad of a WrestleMania in no, ring standpoint. No, it wasn't bad. I would say it's probably got the worst crowd in the history no. of WrestleMania. <laughs> I'd say the worst crowd's that one when that's eight hours long and they're just tired. And see, <laughs> see, I don't know, man. They were just as quiet as each other, but at least you saw them reacting to stuff when it was the eight-hour WrestleMania. You have to give it an upgrade because Gronk was the glue holding the whole WrestleMania this is together. True. Gronk was there watching. He was reacting. He did the yes chance, I remember. And he started his reign as 24-7 champion, if you remember that. I do remember <laughs> that. And then Triple H just had to go and throw it away. What I don't, a heel. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how we got sidetracked already. We're a minute and a half in, and we're already off from what we're talking about. We're looking at the WrestleMania card. WWE officially released their two-night WrestleMania two-night card. So we're going to go through night one, Are WrestleMania Saturday. And all that, or? The only thing on SmackDown is the Andre the Giant Memorial we'll Battle Royale. So, I mean, if you really want to. Yeah, it, yeah I want I want to predict my winner in that. All right, well, before we do that, let me tell you what's coming up in this episode. We've got, apparently... The Andre the Giant <laughs> Memorial Battle Royale. And then we've got John Cena versus Austin Theory. Braun Strowman and Ricochet versus the Street Profits versus Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders in a WrestleMania showcase match. Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. Seth Freakin' Rollins versus Logan Paul. Becky Lynch, Lita, and Trish Stratus versus Damage Control. The Usos versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. And Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley for the SmackDown Women's Championship. That's what we've got coming up. Everyone go ahead and strap in. We usually take a little long to get through this all. <laughs> Jumping right into things with WrestleMania SmackDown. Let's go ahead and run through all the participants in this year's Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. There's a lot of them, so strap in. We've got Cruz Del Toro, Joaquin Wilde, Santos Escobar, Humberto, Angel, Butch, Ridge Holland, Ashante the Adonis, Top Dalla, Mansoor, Marseille, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander, L.A. Knight, Karrion Cross, Bronson Reed, Baron Corbin, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Madcap Moss, Xavier Woods, Mustafa Ali, Elias, Dolph Ziggler, Rick Boogs, Dexter Loomis, Johnny Gargano, and Bobby Lashley. They're all starting in the ring at one time together? Yeah, so a battle royale, I, I, everyone I was, yeah. is <laughs> automatically in, and it's just last person standing. That's going to be a shit show. Well, I mean, battle royales typically are. It's just kind of how they go. Usually you put some bodies in there that are really only there to get thrown out, because then we're just going to really tell the match once we're down to a couple. Right. So with that in mind, I would predict some of the people like Humberto, Angel, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, uh, Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wild that are tag team specialists probably aren't sticking around very right. long. I would also agree with that. Now, there are a couple of exceptions. Santos is kind of a tag team guy being the leader of Legado del Fantasma, but he seems to be getting a lot of love lately, so... He might end up sticking around for a little bit in it. You don't think that the tag teams could work together to eliminate the singles guys, and then it's just all tag teams left? I mean, you know, it's possible, but I've never seen one book that way. My first thought was Cedric Alexander and uh, Shelton Benjamin forming the Hurt Business guys. Well, they are officially a team. We've seen them a couple of times on Raw and main events and things like that, but... 
until they officially pull the trigger, I wouldn't expect anything major coming from them in this match. Bobby Lashley is also in the match. Bobby Lashley is also in this match. Well, yes, and MVP. (laughs) But, yeah, I mean, I I don't necessarily think that this is really a competitive scene. Realistically, we have a very small handful of people that can win it. I think Bobby Lashley... Anybody can win it. Feasibly win it, I'll say. (laughs) Most likely, we're looking at Bobby Lashley, maybe Johnny Gargano. I don't think maybe Dolph Ziggler. Match it, take over. Realistically, it seems like it might be between Bobby Lashley and L.A. Knight. It's they've had a lot of attention lately. They've been talking about trying to have WrestleMania moments. Bobby more so on Twitter than anything, but still, he's talking about it. I mean, he had a match until Bray Wyatt decided to get hurt or sick or whatever he is no one truly knows but i think that I like maybe it was a good moment i think it's possible that because he's not getting the match that he was set up for they will give him this as kind of a sorry about that here's a consolation prize yeah I and then maybe set something up on the raw after mania with the hurt business officially reforming i can see that i think who i would want to win it is probably L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight has proved that he is getting himself over. There's big reactions every week, no matter where they are. People are learning his catchphrases. People are talking about him. But he just needs something to really get the ball rolling. Uh, you said balls to get it because he, his nudes get <laughs> Indubiously. <laughs> That's why I don't think that L.A. Knight's going to win because they got to do some... Hashtag damage control and get him out of the spotlight for just a little bit so that way people aren't looking at looking up on Google. And yeah, don't Google. Oh, <laughs> going on Twitter, let me tweet about what are people saying about LA Knight? Oh no. My face, whenever LA Knight was trending and I looked to see what was going on. What but, do you mean? <laughs> but yeah, I do not think that LA Knight's going to win. And personally, just because I'm not as over on him as everyone else is. Um, of course, Booty, I do love this, and Bobby Lashley, and he did get screwed out of his WrestleMania match, so I could see him, but I could also see, and no, this is a dark horse, Baron Corbin, two-time Battle Royale Andre the Giant champion. Like we've said, anything <laughs> is possible. But according to TikTok, Baron Corbin's getting fired, so I guess it'll be up in the air what happens. Yeah, I mean, I, hey man. Who knows? So let's go ahead and jump to the next day. And WrestleMania Saturday, uh, I don't know if I would necessarily say it is a lesser of the two, but being two nights, the second night's always going to feel a little bit more prestigious. You know, that's the real Sunday, main baby. event. WrestleMania Sunday just rolls off the tongue. But they do have some good matches on here. And they've already confirmed the very first match that we're going to see is John Cena versus Austin Theory for the United States Championship. Back to Hollywood to film his movies. At least he won't have very far to go. They're in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so he's just got to go <laughs> the across the road. He's going to come down. He's going to grab on out. as he's there. <laughs> Dom Toretto's going to be up in the helicopter saying, Do you get on? And... It's about family. <laughs> I hope. Just a little random fantasy booking. I hope Dom comes out with oh, John Cena in a cool car. I thought you were talking about Dom Mysterio at first. I was about to say that. Why would he come out with John Cena? Because <laughs> he's getting the rub. He's getting the true, rub. <laughs> true. The Cody moment from a couple of weeks ago. For true. So let's run over the feud right quick. Uh, they planted the seeds that this match was going to happen for a long time. They were basically saying hey he's gonna fight john cena at wrestlemania just you don't know that yet i mean we had the stuff with the wb 2k 23 trailers coming out and theory mentioning and using catchphrases and a lot of times it comes down to Corey grave just what should be kind of a nuanced line the way he says it just really hits you on the head where he's like, oh, he's showing a lot of ruthless aggression <laughs> in this match tonight. And it's like, like you 
you don't have to do that. I remember when Cody was getting teased about coming back. They were oh, like, and everybody oh, in the whole stadium. everyone knew. Yeah. Corey on one of the go homes, I think it was not the week before, but the one before that, so two weeks before, said something along the lines of, oh, his uh, dashing dreams have just uh, turned into a WrestleMania nightmare. And uh, it's like, Come on, man. His stardust I, dreams have <laughs> like, I get I get it. I really do. Like, you gotta make sure that everyone knows. But come on, man. Like the white rabbit, whenever people were... At least the white rabbit had <laughs> some intrigue. Now I will admit, last year when I was in Dallas, I was telling the people around us that I thought it was gonna be the boogeyman coming out <laughs> to fight Seth Rollins. <laughs> I was unfortunately wrong, but... Whenever you left me here by myself to watch on TV... Uh, I'm sorry that Dallas was calling my name. <laughs> Hollywood would be calling our name, but for $15,000, <laughs> you would say a damn Yeah, that's... It. <laughs> it called my name, and I couldn't even afford to answer, <laughs> much less have a conversation. So, we kind of knew this match was going to come. And I think there's been a lot of people that have drawn some parallels between... Theory and Cena throughout Theory's career, which is, you know, it's fine. It's not necessarily good for him to have that kind of comparison, but it shows, you know, that he has potential, that people see that in him. But I don't know if I necessarily agree. I Like, Cena and Theory, what they have is like a comfort in interacting with the crowd, and that's about it. I think he's closer to maybe like a heel Randy Orton early on. Where he really, he acts like a cocky asshole, and I want to punch him. That's what he is. Yeah, just like Orton. He's no doctor of thugonomics. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see the comparison all that much. But I let's, don't either. You know, let's talk about when it finally became official in, what was it, Boston, Massachusetts, I believe. Whenever Cena's John big Cena return. squashed him in the promo battle. He did squash him in the promo battle. Uh, that, that right there, I was like, oh no. This is awesome. Theory's getting buried. <laughs> They're gonna do it before WrestleMania even starts. Now I've the main event show. I've told you off air about when The Rock really just laid one in on Billy Gunn while he was getting a singles push. Yeah. The famous "It doesn't matter" <laughs> promo. Uh, I don't necessarily know if this is going to be that, but Cena's promos in more recent years, really since. He started his little interactions with The Rock. So maybe not Whenever even in he recent called years. called him out for writing the promo on his hand. Yeah. I feel he's that... He's shoot style, baby. He's just firing from the hip. He is. He is. And that's a really good way to generate really quick heat. Get a lot of people talking. Get buzz about it. Oh my god. Can you believe what he said to Austin Theory? And Austin Theory called him bald. And, it's just like, and then he had to hit him with, uh, I'd rather be bald than have him pipe in crowd noise for me because no one cares. That's just whatever. I'm like, oh no. That's where it's like, dude, you're th like, that's not, that doesn't help Cena look good. That doesn't help Theory look good. It in does my help. opinion. I think it helps Cena look good because it reminds me of the Roman Reigns John Cena whenever he's like, you should feel bad that they got a part timer coming in because See, but here's you're the not thing. doing your job. Long term, the power of hindsight, we know it all worked out fine for Roman Reigns. Because he's the big dog. But it did not work out fine for him right after. People <laughs> were still not liking Roman Reigns just because he beat John Cena. <laughs> Roman Reigns did not get more over because of that feud with John Cena. And I don't know that Austin Theory will get more over because of this feud with John Cena. I it feels would... very rushed, it feels very sudden. And, well, there's only so much you can do whenever you have John Cena on for one show. Well, that's part of show. the problem. He's been there for one show. Yeah. He, they, the, they haven't even gotten him to record, like, pre-tapes backstage to yeah. fake interact. Yeah. They did that for Chucky in WCW, <laughs> but they won't do it for John Cena in theory. And at least Logan Paul's, like, been at events to so you can see his face and be like, oh, yeah, he's... Oh, yeah, he's actually at, yeah, here. He's pissed off at Seth Rollins. <laughs> so, I don't necessarily... I don't think I would say I'm excited for this match. I'm I sure am, it'll be good. I am excited just because like, it's John Cena. Well, and, see, that's exactly what they're banking on. And, and I'm sure I the match itself is going to be good. I saw something that this is going to be like John Cena's final year in the ring for WWE, and that like really tugs at my heartstrings. Yeah, I mean, but uh, it's if if he gets the Ric Flair treatment, I'm, like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I love you. And then he hits him with the A Town Down. 
Hey, down, down, we about to go down. I, I just, I don't know that I see Cena sticking around. I don't either. So even if he does win, I feel like it would be one of those where he wins and then he has an open challenge either the next night on Raw, which will also be in L.A., or maybe he gets to go to, like, Backlash or the next Saudi show and do it there. Oh, Saudi but would be a soon show. The progressive... <laughs> the progressive city Advanced of, city. insert name of Saudi Arabia <laughs> show here. I, should, I don't know that I see him sticking around. And, you know, that line that Cena used where he was like, even if you beat me, you lose everything. To me, that seems almost telling you're gonna beat me and then the crowd's gonna eat you alive the next night to get you heel heat no he's Cena has already primed that crowd to eat him alive oh yeah but it was like one of those things where it's uh you lose if you lose no matter what like it's like fighting a girl like if you win you beat up a girl but if you lose you You got beat up by a girl (laughs) no I I get it you know it's one of those where it's like Look, you're an idiot. You, this is a lose lose situation for you. And that promo John Cena did, I think, has, I think that's really solidified that. Because I will say this the promo that Austin Theory gave, like in the empty arena, saying that he was doing it all for himself, he didn't care about anybody else, that was fire. But I haven't it seen was the a really, or really good anything, one. but I would be willing to bet that there were so many more people that saw the John Cena promo just because it was John Cena and they were saying. John Cena's coming back than they did the... Oh, well, I mean, awesome yeah, but that's... Promo. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But you also have to remember one thing, like... We've talked to this... Well, it still feels like, why are they fighting to me, though? I don't... It does to me, too. But what I was going to say is that... you We've talked about this off-air. You have to remember, WWE is not doing this for me that's going to watch every Monday. I'm... Um, getting on, switching over to USA at 7.59 because I don't want Law & Order <laughs> to get a ratings bump for me coming a second earlier. They're doing it for the people that are going to see, oh my god, look, it's John Cena. No like offense. Oh, one for you. I was going to say no offense to our mother, uh, but that's yeah. exactly how she is. She every she doesn't think Austin Theory has a chance because he's going against John Cena, and John Cena's the best. That's exactly what they are counting on. She sees anybody that's smaller than the other guy she also. And you know, Austin Theory (laughs) is smaller than John Cena. She would have been perfect for the seventies and eighties bookings. That's that's when she grew up. (laughs) It's just one of those where. Why are they fighting though? Like Austin Theory. The U.S. title. Well, I know, but Austin Theory just called him out. Yes. Oh, what is it? Is John Cena? If he wins, he'll break the record or he'll tie the record. What is it? I believe it is tie the record. I could see John Cena winning just because of that. Let's fact check right quick. Quick pause. Back from our fact check. Ric Flair has six reigns. John Cena has five, all of which are under WWE. And Chris Benoit also has five. We'll blur that for the... (laughs) Three of which were from WCW and two in WWE. So, based on that, uh, I mean... I don't, I don't know that Cena prediction. necessarily needs that. She doesn't, but it's changed my whole prediction. I think that WWE will be those kind of people to say, like, I like a recency bias to be like, oh, look, John Cena has the tied the record for the most ever world heavyweight or world championships and the U.S. championships. I think that'll be a very... Just to keep them in the GOAT conversation? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's possible, you know? Like, there, it's... That's the thing about WB. Ain't no way to tell what they're thinking because maybe Especially they know something that we don't. Triple H. Oh, yeah. Right. They might know something that Cena's going to be able to work, say, 20 dates in the upcoming month. Yeah. So maybe they're going to keep the title on them and give them a longer feud with Theory. I mean, $5 I think, dollars I think five Theory, honestly, hey, man. <laughs> I think Theory could benefit from more than just a one-off match, getting a chance for... You know, loss, regroup himself, come back and win. That would be really cool if um, it like burned all the way to SummerSlam. I just I can't see Cena working Mania and SummerSlam. Well, with the way that Triple H is doing right now, I could see a slow burn where it's not every week that we have it, but it's like comes up for the big shows that John Cena is still lurking around and everything. Yeah, I mean, and because that like, is John a very Cena's Triple H thing known to do to lose at SummerSlam. It is true. And I could definitely see Austin Theory clutching the win out there and getting the wins back. 
but uh, be very interesting. So let's go with our official predictions for John Cena versus Austin Theory at WrestleMania Saturday. I'll go first. Based on Theory really needing something to set him apart and John Cena being on a more limited schedule, I'm going to go with Theory getting the win, but I think it's going to be a good match. I'm just not necessarily all that excited for it because it doesn't have much build. And then for my prediction, it all came down to that uh, about the record for the U.S. title range because I was going to pick Theory, and he's working me like nobody's business because I hate him. But uh, I thought he was going to win at first, but now I think John Cena is going to win, and I really fantasy booked this in my head to last until SummerSlam and then Theory winning it back there. Next up on the WrestleMania Saturday Night card, we have the Men's WrestleMania Showcase Tag Team Match. Uh, let's run through the participants real quick. The team of Braun Strowman and Ricochet. I wish they had a tag name. I, but do I don't too. know what it could be. Ricochet. The Street Profits, Alpha Academy, and the Viking Raiders. Now, we were just talking about how Theory and Cena felt thrown together. <laughs> this is literally just thrown together. Yeah, but at least it's kind of like admitted. It's just a showcase. It's like... Seeing what we all got. Yeah, and I think that it's probably meant to kind of establish, you know, teams going forward into next yeah. season. Like, and I think it's going to be like a number one contender type. I don't deal. think it'll be a, like expressed as one, but I do think it'll be whoever wins is a number one contender yeah. Yeah. type vibe. Right. Like that'll be the one that everybody I guess is getting the looking out for and basically getting the push. Yeah. There are some reports I've seen that Triple H is already planning who to push for the next year, so this might be the start of it. Yeah. That's why there have been some reports about Montez Ford getting a solos push. That's what this I've might seen be a way Uber just to get him, him on the WrestleMania card and bring some eyes to him for yeah. long-term booking. Now, not to get too sidetracked, I do not think that now is the time for that. I think there's still a lot the Street Profits can do together, and I would like to see Montez explore a heel side while he still has the benefit of being in the tag team division. I want more of a character from him, because I'll be honest, I don't pop for the DX suck it and things that he does. It's, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to lie, he's great in the ring, but his character is just not, I'm not cheering for it. I feel like AEW, whenever they say a cuss word, then everybody's saying, Ooh, <laughs> it's the Attitude Era again. I get that. I really do. It's just... Characters are one of those things that, especially as a tag team, don't really exist. I mean, let's look at the rest of the people in this match. Thank you. <laughs> Chad Gable's just a guy that says thank you and is smart, and he's good at wrestling. Otis is just a he's guy that likes him. blonde girls with blue eyes, and brother, I'm right there with you, so that's not a character. The Ricochet, Vikings. the Viking Raiders are the one exception. Ricochet and Braun Strowman are just two dudes that look like each other, but one got pumped up like a Looney Tunes commercial. <laughs> One's really strong and one can do some flips. And that's all you need. That's like, all they, you need. They could do Ross Brothers. That'd be kind of cool. Like that movie uh, Twins with Danny DeVito and I never Arnold seen that. Schwarzenegger. That's a good movie. Yeah, are you saying that they should kayfabe that they're long lost brothers <laughs> yeah. with one another? Yeah. I imagine it's like Step Bros. That would, that would explain them coming together as a tag team more than what we've gotten. Hunter, are you listening? <laughs> we used to say Vince, but can't still, really do that to the Yeah, that's true. Vince. That's true. Vince, I know you watch our TikToks, Daddy always talking Vince. about Homo sapiens. So, I mean, there's not really, in terms of like a story, anything to talk about here. We've had a couple of tune-up matches between all of these different participants, which, but I mean, I'm that's cool. I'm really excited for this match. I mean, I don't know. I think it'll be a good match. I think it'll be, yeah, I think it'll be a really good match. Yeah, and but, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see what they're all going to do. I think with Ricochet and Montez, they can do some crazy spots. And uh, what's the big Viking? Ivar? Yeah, Ivar's the big one. Yeah. Eric's the stronger one. I mean, yeah, Ivar can do some cool stuff. And, and I mean, course, Chad Gable and they Otis will probably also Strowman be it. doing some... Big meaty men slapping meat. Not to mention Ivar in that yeah. sense, too. Ivar is a big old man. That's like in the 4v4, whatever they. The three standing there and they just start slapping meat. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you gotta do. You gotta cater to your audience. And that's me. And that's the audience, brother. 
I don't know, like, like there have been some tune-ups, and I trust me, all four of these teams are great. I'm a big War Machine fan. Ricochet is one of my don't favorites. <laughs> oh no, I said War Machine. I'm never gonna get hired, Vince. I'm sorry. I mean, I think all of these are talalented wrestlers. Yeah, I, I just there's not a story, and well, that's the issue. not in a offensive way when I say this. Who's having both tag team championship belts and and beating everyone for yeah. them? Because hasn't wrong. all of the, haven't all these teams? Well, not all of them, but I know the Street Profits have lost to the Usos. Yes, Alpha Academy has lost to them. I be- if so, it's been a while, but I believe they have. Yeah. And then. Braun and Ricochet are new, and the Viking Raiders are just getting their push, or getting their heat. And I, actually, I think, I'm almost positive Braun and Ricochet did on an episode of SmackDown face them. Oh, really? Because Jay came back out, oh, yeah. and that was the one where it was like, oh no, he's not going to be here to defend him. And I thought Solo was going to uh, step up to it, but I was wrong. No, look, it's just, it's a match. And I don't mean any offense when I say this, especially to any of the four teams involved, you got to have a let me up match. You got to have the match where people catch their breath. They have a couple of things to keep them awake and alive. But they got to go get their drinks for $27. <laughs> Although, I will tell you, in, at, in Dallas, when you were at, I don't know the name of the arena off the top of my head, or stadium, AT&T I guess. Stadium that sounds Jerry right. Uh, you could put in your seat number and order on an app. Yeah, that's like And they everywhere. deliver it to you. That's like everywhere. Well, I'm sorry that I haven't been to major stadium <laughs> shows in America all that often. That's been going on like pre-COVID. I'm about to end this episode. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I mean, it'll be even more. Valhalla. <laughs> I'm just excited for Ricochet to do a really cool dive. That's I I, I love the character work. I I, I want somebody that's. A, a dentist, like I you can't get my. I want the whole Brit Breaker in AEW. Is she a dentist? She's actually she's a real dentist. Oh wow! She actually has a DMD. Wow, and she wrestles. Yeah. Huh, that's interesting. But uh, yeah, I want the uh, character work. I want people to have something that's goofy or kind of weird, but just makes me makes me enjoy it a little bit more. That's why I like the Viking Raiders so much. The Viking Raiders are cool, but I I kind of wish that they didn't. Machine. <laughs> I kind of wish they didn't like bring out literal shields and stuff. You don't. You wish they would not act like actual Vikings. No, it's not that. Talking I just like snow and everything. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, you just you. It's a fine line between character and comedy act. <laughs> like Doink the Clown started as an evil spirit that took the form of a clown to lure children away from their parents and have a false sense of security and he turned into the guy Basically, that fought yeah. Bam Bam yeah literally just did but he turned into the guy that was pulling pranks on Luna Vachon and Bam Bam Bigelow with a little squirt pedal and stuff and then his greatest ever appearance came in the greatest money in the bank at Titan Towers before I have an aneurysm <laughs> let's jump into who we think's gonna win this match like I said I think that it's gonna kind of set up who's the next challengers. Yeah. And if Sammy and KO do it, then it'll probably be a heel team. But I, I don't think Alpha Academy has that much longer together. Especially with oh, uh, Otis. Being Otis off. is off, man. He's going to the moon. <laughs> yeah, so good looking. So I think... And everybody made fun of the Mandy Rose storyline. Hey, man, that was the biggest storyline <laughs> going into that WrestleMania. <laughs> Now, I think if Somebody the uh, Sammy and KO <laughs> win, that it'll most likely be the Viking Raiders getting the win. Really? I mean, I think that they could use yeah. it. I think it's something that, you know, they could certainly... I think they could have really good matches against yeah. KO and Sami Zayn. And I think, that especially given what we've seen from them in the past in NXT, when they are allowed to go out and actually have a good match, they have a great match. Yeah, that's true. So I think that they'd be... I think they'd be really good people to kind of push and hopefully split up the titles. Yeah, Maybe that's know. where we're going. Instead of number one contenders, it's like these people will become separate champs on yeah. the other show. I don't know. But I, I think I'm going to go with them. That's on the working assumption that the Usos won't win. And we'll talk more about that at the end of this episode. I think this match has a wide array of the way that they're going to build stories off of. 
And I could see the Street Profits losing, especially if they want to get Montez, his singles push. And I don't think that Alpha Academy is going to be around, like you said, with Otis and his womanizing ways. And um, I, I could see the Viking Raiders, but um, I can also see Braun and Ricochet. And I think it really depends on what they're going to do with the Usos, if they're going to retain or not. But uh, I think I'm going to agree with you. I think the Viking Raiders could win. But I'm, my pick is going to be uh, Braun and Ricochet, just because I think they need it, and I think they're a cool tag team. And I, that's just where I can see the storylines going. All right, we're going into what arguably is one of the best-built stories of the entire WrestleMania now. This is the match I'm most excited for in a long time. We're looking at Rey Mysterio versus his own son, Dominic Mysterio. Now, let's run over the entire storyline as brief as we can. Uh, basically, we started to see some problems around this time last year when Dom wanted to be a little bit more heelish, but Rey was kind of keeping him in check. And then with Judgment Day forming and turning against Edge, they started targeting the Mysterios, Ray not wanting to put his son in more harm's way, and having a little bit more faith in Edge, probably, decided to team up with him at Clash at the Castle. And this is where you and I take two differing standpoints. <laughs> uh, in my analysis, Ray was correct to do so because Edge is a better superstar. But in your analysis, it's all Dom about is, family. It's all, there you go. And Dom he Mysterio. betrayed his own son. Is it his only son? I think it's the only son. Yeah, it's his only yeah, son. His he only has a daughter son. too, but only son. And he but did, he didn't he betray did what, him. He just he he, he had one he match that wasn't somebody with him. Else for one his, match. Yes. For one match. For the was it not for the no, it wasn't for any champion. Uh, it was just against them. But, but he, it was around this that, time. He did not think that Dom was a man enough. To be fair, let's look at what was going in the lead up to this. Uh, let's put the picture of Dom getting choked out by Rhea Ripley here. <laughs> now let's put the picture of Dom getting carried out bloody by Rhea Ripley here. You just wish it was you. That's why you're... <laughs> it's hard to see someone else live my dreams. It truly is. I'm sorry, I got distracted <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> so, he turns on him. And kick Edge right in the balls. As I like to call it, he hoofed him in the balls because he his tiny balls. Oh, he really got like him. Our great host, the Miz, and his massive balls. Of course, <laughs> oh, massive balls. <laughs> now it's I don't know if you would want to say interesting or anything like that, but pretty much right away he joins Judgment Day. I think that they kind All of saw a mommy made a man out of him. That's true. But, but I think what in a Rey shoot style. couldn't do because he was so absent. Well, there's <laughs> other reasons Ray couldn't have done that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, meant, I meant just a man in general. I don't mean that way. I, that's what Rhea did. I don't know what to tell you. Allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. You know, you come to think of it, they never even like really kiss or anything. Which I mean, I know they don't because they're not actually dating. What? Huh? <laughs> I don't. It, it's. It's kind of weird, because, like, they're very obviously together, but they don't do anything to really imply that they are, other than, well, like, the dom-dom and mommy. Yeah, and they show up at the family gatherings together, and their arms are around each other. That's how boys hang out. <laughs> so, Judgment Day pretty much makes Rey Mysterio's life El Living Hell, and... He threatens to retire. I thought he really was. That was crazy when that happened. I don't know. I thought they were going to ride him off for a little bit. I'm glad they didn't. He instead was moved to the SmackDown brand while Judgment Day and Dom were on the Raw brand. And then around the Royal Rumble, because they just stopped really caring about the brand split, we saw them start to interact again. Dom took Ray out of the Royal Rumble, meaning Ray never entered, so Cody never truly won because Ray actually hasn't been eliminated from it yet. So <laughs> Go watch her. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man. Full breakdown. The full breakdown is me saying that he didn't win, <laughs> but that's really what got us to where we are. Ray trying to refuse to hit his own son, Dom trying to goad him into it every week, Dom challenging him to a match at WrestleMania right after he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now, taking a small break, huge congrats to Rey Mysterio. Yes, most definitely. One of my most favorite wrestlers. 
ever. Probably ever. Yeah. Just the mass is what really did it for me as a kid, but ever since then, it's just always been a fan of him. A little lore on the casual marks. That's us. Uh, our, our first WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, our names are both Mark. <laughs> Our first WrestleMania that we watched was Rey Mysterio winning the World Heavyweight Championship from Randy Orton and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 21, and I was which the was or, guy excuse me, that was 22. Whole class because I knew what happened before Raw came on. Our parents let us get that pay per view. So very yeah. cool. That was <laughs> Big Scott. For anyone that came from the TikTok about Scott, that dude loved him some <laughs> Rey Mysterio. Man, he really did. But let's get back into. The actual conversation. What finally got Ray to hit his own son and finally got him to accept the match was him telling his mom to shut up. Which I like that. I mean, it's cool that he's defending his wife's honor and everything, but... It's like, you can do anything you want to to me, but not to my woman and to your own mother. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what he said. But, Almost but, verbatim. But he hit his own son. Like, what kind of coward hits their own son like that? I mean, he, he really hit him, too. Like, he, he hit him, and from what the reports are saying, he called him a punk motherfucker for it, yeah. too. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm obviously, hopefully, obviously, kayfabing that I, I... I am a Dom Mysterio fan, but... Uh, obviously, he's the heel on everything. <laughs> but I, I do love him. I can't deny that. He, it's undeniable. It's undeniable. Just how much he's improved. And I think that comes from working with some more veteran people like Rhea, Balor, and Damien. Probably especially on the house show yeah. loops. But I think he really, he has gotten over as like the most hated heel on the shows right now. Yeah, and we can take a small little break away from it. Unlike, say, MJF. Unlike, say, Roman Reigns. Even unlike, someone could say, Chad Gable and Otis. People don't cheer for Dom when he comes no, out. No, not at all. Unless I'm there. Of course, of course. <laughs> but even then, like, it's very few people that ever are actually cheering for Dominic Mysterio. Right. Those are some loud reactions. And I don't know what they're going to do after this, obviously, but uh, just the fact that Dom's able to progress so far from the Let's, Thunderdome Arena days. Even more. I mean, he, he wasn't that comfortable, even that first promo yeah. when he turned heel. They didn't let him do it in public because he was a little bit still uncomfortable on the mic, but he's grown in, what was that? Well, you know, Clash prison, of the Castle, eight, nine change, months? Changes, it, it really does, doesn't <laughs> it? It really does. So let's talk about you know who we think's going to win, who we want to win, etc. Um, I don't know if I believe that Rey Mysterio is hanging it up. I don't think that he is. I've seen reports that he still wants to wrestle, but I mean, obviously, wrestling reports are just they're just babies. lying. Yeah. They're just lying. <laughs> they're just making up, making it up as we go. I could say right now, Ravens is going to retire before WrestleMania because he don't want to hit his son. You heard it here first. That's the reports, baby. <laughs> That's what my sources said. What's your source? Can't give away my sources, brother. But um, I kind of thought that whenever this feud did come to an end, it was going to be like a mask for career type thing but uh, it did kind of you know i think we all kind of thought that's where it was going but that's with us assuming that this feud is ending now and that's kind of why i don't think that it is i don't hmm. think that ray's going to hang it up the mask or the boots because i think that there's more to this story maybe dominic takes it from the beginning maybe it's possible i think and ray must wrestles maskless that'd be crazy maybe not that part <laughs> maybe not that part wcw tried to go in that route and look where <laughs> wcw is now i'm not saying the two are related but they both happened but correlation i'm just curious is mommy or damian priest or finn Balor anybody gonna be out there for dom i would assume damian is just because damian's not doing anything else gotcha and i mean like is I, mommy on night one or night two night one that's why oh, I don't think she'll be on. She'll but Balor is on night two, so he might yeah, be out there too. Personally, I wouldn't have him out there. Yeah. Especially it, knowing that the demon's going to be there. So. And, um, together. I like to think of it as like a big brother, little brother yeah, type vibes. Yeah. Well, Rawls. let's go ahead and... Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't think Ray's done. I think the story's got more to go, and I think the best way to continue the story is Ray getting the win. And then maybe Dom right away attacking him afterwards. Maybe even taking his mask. But Ray just doesn't work maskless. 
just let him wear another mask. <laughs> And I think that then maybe I mean maybe SummerSlam. I don't I don't know if we could drag this out until next Mania. That's yeah. a long ways away. Well, and, and you and I both I think have that mindset that WrestleMania is the season end. That's where the story ends. But that's obviously not the case anymore. So that's what I was thinking myself. Is I was like, oh, the story's done after this. But um, I didn't even think that it could st- still keep going. So. Very interesting to think about that, but I just love this story all and all through. Like bringing up Eddie Guerrero so much, and Dom saying he wished Eddie was his real father. Uh, that really got my heart pumping. That was how was true. Good. It was good. <laughs> so your official predictions for this my, match? Did you predict? Yeah, my oh, official prediction. Ray's I think Ray's gonna win. Okay. Dom's gonna get his heat back, and then I think. Probably we'll see them on the same brand and kind of doing some long-term stories. Maybe SummerSlam, and then Ray can give up the mask there. I don't know. I I want Dom to win so bad, and just to hear the boos if Dom does win would just be amazing. But I don't think that Ray's done either, and honestly, I hope that Dom comes out during the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Knocks him over the head or something like that. I mean, it's possible. But uh, I think, being realistically, I think, and not talking with my heel heart, I think that Ray's probably going to win this one. We're going to keep on rocking here, and we're looking at, honestly, I think probably the most fun build and the most fun match that we're going to have. Seth freaking Rollins versus Logan fucking Ball. <laughs> I know that they couldn't get away with it, but I think that would have been kind of cool for Logan Paul to call himself that at one point. But Maverick. The Mav. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't ring as good as Logan fucking Paul. Maybe that's just me. I am the table. That should be <laughs> just all that he ever says. So, I've said this to a couple of people on the TikTok and uh, pretty much everywhere that people argue with me about wrestling. I really think this is going to be the most fun match. I think this will be probably the best match on like all of WrestleMania. Whether you hate him or love him, Logan Paul is amazing in the ring, and Seth Rollins is Seth freaking Rollins, obviously. And I think they'll just put on a really, really great match. Like this might get a five star banger from Meltzer. I don't know. It's I think WrestleMania will have at least one, and we'll talk about that when we do our episode two for night two. But they are. There's a lot going on in this storyline. It started out as kind of a just, oh, look, Logan Paul's so annoying, which that's all you need for a feud, really. (laughs) Uh, We saw it in the Rumble. I remember in the Rumble when it happened, I was like, oh, man, that's going to be the Mania match. Yeah. And people doubted me. Yeah. But here I am. I kind of wanted Ricochet to be the Mania match just because I think they'd do some crazy flippy shit with each other. What do you mean, Ricochet and... Rick Shane Logan Paul. Oh, uh, that would be cool. You remember the double dive? The uh, two springboards where they met yeah, in the middle. I, I do remember that. It was it was a crazy spot. And I think they could do some cool stuff together, but I understand Seth Rollins a bigger match. And I think it goes into the new story a little bit better of Logan Paul being this outsider and Seth Rollins kind of being Mr. WWE for lack of better terms. Right. Which and Becky Lynch talking shit about Logan Paul, too. They're all, they're all built up. I enjoy this. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's Logan, been an entertaining yeah. build. Logan, Logan Paul, Paul coming in the uh, Elimination Chamber, that was sick. Yeah, I liked that a lot. I, You know, they have done that before where people have gotten into the Elimination Chamber. But when they Shawn switched Michaels. over, it kind of, yeah, that was when he removed the floor panel to get in. It made it where it was a lot harder for someone to get in. I think they worked well around that with the curb stomp on the outside. Didn't somebody get hurt? Montez yeah. got curb stomped, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why they had to open the... Yeah. And I, I think they did it fairly well. They treated it like it was real and you know, until the next night when he came out and he was fine. But I think it was interesting. And Logan Paul feels a lot more natural as the heel. Yeah, 100%. Like, I understand why you would want him to be the babyface, because he's bringing in fans. People like, say, when he was facing The Miz or Roman Reigns, and they don't watch WWE, and they're just seeing that he's going to be having a match. He's 
Logan Paul is just being a heel to wrestling fans. Like, people that like Logan Paul, they're going to like him no matter what. Like, him coming in and saying that no matter what he does, everybody's still going to hate him. Like, that's 100% true. Because people still deny that Logan Paul is even good in the ring. Oh, yeah. I mean, we might get people he on this video. He hasn't been in the video. Indies for 15 years, so he doesn't deserve a WrestleMania match. Let's use this as a caveat into that discussion. This idea of... This will probably Does be, Logan be its Paul own deserve it? Episode at some point in time, it most likely will. But we'll do a little shortened version here. Does Logan Paul deserve a WrestleMania match? Yes. Now this is coming from you as a more casual fan. What is your stance on the idea of putting in the work, the indies, the travel, the grind, blah 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 blah? It doesn't matter how hard you work. There's somebody that's always going to be better than you, and you have to accept that. And I, Logan Paul is just one of the people that's just naturally gifted at wrestling. And I think he has a future in it if he wants it. And, um, I mean, he has, like, what, 30 million followers or something like that. It's bringing more eyes to WWE than any kind of indie star or anything like that. And, uh, I mean, he definitely deserves a match. And I like that he is not on all the time. So I know he's going to get a crazy match. He's going to do some crazy spots because if he gets hurt, he can be out until SummerSlam or whatever. That's true. We saw that with um, Crown Jewel, I believe it was. Whenever he jumped off with the cell phone. Yeah. yeah. it's The Saudi shows kind of run together in my head. But kind of going off that idea of what you said about bringing eyes to it, I think that there is, especially at WrestleMania time, an important factor of knowing that there are people that only watch at this time. Yeah. There are people that start mm-hmm. watching at the Rumble and stop watching at Mania. They, yeah, it's like the essentially the, the watching the playoffs. Shift. Right. You know, I don't watch the NFL, but say that I watch the last, I don't know how much is in the playoffs in the NFL. Eight games. No, it's like, it's like four games. Yeah, four, four games. Four games. I was but close. I was close. Ball. If you make it to the Super Bowl, of course. So it's the equivalent of that, you know, being able to watch it. I think Logan Paul, with that in mind, is someone that brings more eyes to WrestleMania. But I've noticed among some wrestling fans, and I'll put up our reverse bell curve image (laughs) here, there are these people that don't seem to want there to be more wrestling fans. The gatekeepers. (laughs) The gatekeepers of the wrestling world. Now there's also the reverse of this. Where you have those people that so strongly do not want to even give wrestling a chance. You know, oh, it's fake. I don't understand why you would watch it. But then you also have the people that are such good fans of it. It's like, well, you just don't understand. Don't watch it. You need to go watch AEW instead so you can see real wrestling. It doesn't matter. If you want we to watch should wrestling, want. You have to watch Kenny Omega and Okada's hour long match. <laughs> I don't understand why there's this idea in wrestling. That there is a right way to enjoy your wrestling. Yeah, it's, it's all entertainment. If you're entertained from it, then it's doing its job. Now, there are things in wrestling that I personally am not entertained by. Like death matches. Certain death matches. Talking to sure. John Moxley. Moxley, you do play it a lot. <laughs> but it's just, there are certain things that aren't for me. But wrestling is such, it's the circus, you know? I don't necessarily like the clowns, but then the elephants come out. <laughs> that was death. a much better example than I meant for it to be. <laughs> They've been to animals at the circus, though. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's what it means when we don't have giants anymore. <laughs> Speaking of which, make sure you tune into the next episode to hear us talk <laughs> about Omos and the Omos Cinematic Universe. Great series on TikTok. Check us out. If you're not on our TikTok, or if you're actively listening to our TikTok right now, go check out the YouTube. Or the TikTok. <laughs> you know what? Here's a good point. Uh... With the idea of putting in the time, putting in the dues, everything like that, our TikTok is about, mm, what, three months old, I'd say? Yeah. And has about... Mm, We're like, what, 4,500 followers, I think? Ish, yeah. and we've also probably gotten about two, maybe three million views now. Yeah. A good bit of coverage. Yeah. Well, now, one of those videos makes up at least a third of those well, views. Yeah. And we've like, put out a video, about a video one at least a video a day. Yeah, ex- a few exceptions when I was feeling a little burnt out. But other than that, but here's the thing, okay? Our YouTube has been a thing for three <laughs> years. So if you're listening to us on TikTok 
And you're one of the people that says Logan Paul hasn't earned a spot because he hasn't gone and put in the grind and put in the time. Go subscribe to our YouTube instead because that's three <laughs> years old and it's been putting in the work, brother. Not We haven't really put in the work. but No, it has because well, yeah. <laughs> that is there. And it doesn't yeah. matter the quality or how often because those people are having it. You know, it's like, it's Jushin like Thunder thing. Liger got to a point he only had one <laughs> match a month, but he was still a legend, damn it. <laughs> it's like I told you the other night. I equate this to like music. Just because you've been touring around dive bars and everything for 20 years doesn't mean you're in line to get the next big country music contract or rock or whatever. It's are you good or are you not? And that's how it should be equated. It should not be accounted for how long you work in something. I mean, yeah, it's honorable and it's a cool story, but that doesn't that shouldn't be the determinant of are you in WrestleMania or not? Don't get me wrong. I think that seniority and, you know, that kind of I've put in the time I deserve this does have a place, but I don't think it is the only decision. But yeah, that's what it's not For example, one. you see people all the time saying, like, Jay Uso needs to be the one to dethrone Roman because he's been in the story so long and Cody just came from AEW. Well, I'll tell you guys that our truth has been in WWE even longer than Roman Reigns. And he's never been Universal Champion, so why isn't he the one ending it? Hmm? Hmm? Vince? Why is it Rey Mysterio? Book it. Why is it Rey Mysterio facing Roman Exactly. Reigns? It's like, people pick and choose when the seniority card is applicable, Yeah. when in reality it never is. Right, and it's 100%. It goes off talent. And Not even necessarily talent. I think it's a draw thing. Yeah, a draw, yeah. Because there are plenty of people on the roster that are more talented than Roman Reigns. I was just sorry to the Roman fans. I was fans. It back to the entertainment side of it. Yeah, but I'm I think entertainment in the same way. Yeah, the draw. Yeah. Let's look at Conor McGregor for example <laughs> in UFC. I don't think Conor McGregor is the most talented fighter in right, his but weight he's class. Sold the most pay per views. He's the biggest draw. Yeah. So he gets the most opportunities. Yeah. And now, that's, that's where what are people is. upset about it? No. That's what WrestleMania is for. Like, were they upset about Johnny Knoxville? Probably. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. But jo the, a lot more people know Johnny Knoxville than people know Sami Zayn. But now more people know Sami Zayn because right. they saw him with yeah. Johnny Knoxville. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to happen with Seth Rollins as well. I do too. And I think Seth Rollins is so talented that he's going to take anyone that is seeing him for the first time and turn them into a WWE fan. Yeah, I mean, like my girlfriend, she loves Seth Rollins now, and partly because of his song, his outfits, but just him in the ring is incredible. It's something that, like, even if you don't like wrestling, you get it when you see him. Yeah. You're like, okay, it's a two on my four scale. I love the Seth Rollins, like, tweener style of he can be a heel, he can be a face, and it's... Uh, he's just like at his peak. He's yeah, really yeah. at the highest point. I was about to say he's ascended to the top. Well, let's get into our official predictions. I will let you go first on this one because I have a relatively controversial take. <laughs> I, uh, I'm conflicted here because I'll be honest. I want Seth Rollins to win, but uh, him taking those punches are hilarious. The one lucky shots. And knocking out, and that that's going to go in my. I'm just trying to think. That's going to go into my factor into my decision. I think Seth Rollins is going to win. I think he's going to get hit with the punch, and it's going to be the closest two count you've ever seen in your entire life. Kick out, and then hit him with a curb stomp. One, two, three. Seth Rollins, and then we get to all sing this song and be happy. I do think having. I think it's supposed to be close to ninety thousand people in attendance, and having ninety thousand people sing yeah. his song would be <clears> awesome. <throat> Here's my official prediction, and uh, before you call me out for being an idiot or a mark, <laughs> I want you to hear me out. Uh, let's work on the assumption that Cody is going to win for a second. Now, we obviously don't know. I don't even know if that's where I'm going to go with my prediction tomorrow when we record. i got to really take some time to think about it. If Cody wins... Who does he fight at Backlash? Because all the reports are coming out that Roman is taking a break. And Which if Roman's one. going to take a break, and we're going to have a little one-off, a little vacation in Puerto Rico. Oh, is that where Backlash is? I think Logan oh. Paul should beat Seth Rollins 
and then face Cody Rhodes maximum heel heat on Logan Paul because he just beat Seth Rollins probably by cheating maybe brass knucks ultimate heel Logan Paul versus resilient babyface Cody Rhodes and then you let that. Cody Rhodes fucking smack Logan Paul around or and you can tell a good story with that like similar to the whole you're an outsider you haven't earned it if we hear the criticisms from fans that would integrate that. it into a story especially with Cody Rhodes like he is the epitome of I've worked my ass off for years and he <laughs> is literally from undeni- or from undesirable to undeniable yeah now Logan Paul relatively has always been undeniable <laughs> yeah. since coming into the WWE. He has just been able to waltz in. It's fine. And I think that that's a really good story that you can tell, and I don't think you can tell it without Logan Paul beating Seth Rollins. I agree with that. That's a, that's a good point. So we might be going a little bit out of order here. I'm not really sure, because we're going to go ahead and look at Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus The Usos. This very well may be the main event, which would be the first time ever a tag team championship match was the main event of WrestleMania. Really? It, that would be a cool feature. That'd be huh. a cool factor. But there is another strong contender to main event being Rhea and Charlotte. And without getting into any of the details of our predictions for that match, I actually think that will be the main event. Partially because I think that the company still sees Charlotte as a very big draw. She is, and I could see them doing... I know they're big on the uh, quality of men and women events, and they have... Uh, like Women's women main events. Yeah. And Here's my other thing. In the last year, one calendar year, from last WrestleMania to this WrestleMania, Rhea Ripley has been an MVP. She has done oh, so well. She's probably. done incredible. She's done great with Judgment Day. She's been booked to be dominant against everyone that she's gone against. She's literally become a top merch seller she does great stuff with dom and the character work on mommy the only thing i i will even admit this i am a Rhea stan and to a degree i'm a charlotte fan as well their build has not been good yeah. their build is very well, yeah. dependent on three years ago <laughs> when we made our last predictions video you beat me <laughs> So now I want to beat you. And it's like, I, I like yes, that is a good payoff. But you need something more than just, well, now I'm ready. Right. That, that's I not enough. I win back. Now, I know that you are an advocate for this match to main event. Yeah, I think it should. Because if it's not, I think it's going to be, and to me, it'll also be like a disappointment. Like, after this match, I don't really, I mean, I do care about Rhea and Charlotte, but... This is the match that I am really looking forward to on night one. Like, um, it just will. What was the match that you said that people just left after the Samoa Joe <laughs> and Roman Reigns? They didn't even stay for it. No, I don't I, think it would be the same I don't as that. Think it would be, but I think the crowd would be dead. I think afterwards. we'd be looking at something similar as when uh, I believe at WrestleMania 25. It was Undertaker and Sean, and then that had to be followed up by Triple H versus Randy Orton, where Triple H got DQ and he lost the title, and it was a very slow and boring match. Or that time that at WrestleMania, what was that, 19, I believe, off the top? No, 18 off the top of my head. Uh, the Rock and Hulk Hogan had their match, and then right after, Triple H had a match against Chris Jericho for the title, where he couldn't be disqualified because Stephanie was there. Uh, n- look, no offense, Triple H, maybe you just shouldn't have main evented sometimes. <laughs> But just, I think that putting this match, like, as the second to last, it'll just be a mistake. Because that crowd, if you have Rhea and Charlotte, like, there's still going to be a rowdy, loud, popping crowd. Especially with the anticipation of, oh my god, we're about to see Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens probably, maybe, beat the Usos for the, and break the streak of the longest tag team ever. Like, that, that place will be rocky. It will be. Now... And I, just I, think, I just personally think they'll be tired after that. <laughs> they probably will. That will be a very emotional match, and I think that has the potential to really drain your audience. Yeah. Personally, I would have had Sammy, KO, and the Usos start night two. I thought about that. Pers- I just think that, you know, kind of like the My GM in 2K23, it, you start hot, you finish hot. And if you do it in one night, you make it the entire story of the bloodline well, you can't collapsing. Start hotter than John Cena, so they're really starting hot, and then they're, and then they're really, really <laughs> finishing hot. 
I don't know. That's getting into fantasy booking, the biggest rival of all enjoyment yeah, and, and I, wrestling. I, my fantasy booking is going to play a huge factor in who I'm picking for this match. It will for me, too, as much as I hate to admit it. Let's run through the story right quick. Uh, it's a lot. Really, we can look at last year, Sami Zayn going against Johnny Knoxville. A surprisingly fun match. It was. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be whenever I first heard about it. I think that's, you know, a big statement to Sami. Johnny Knoxville. Oh. Honestly, also Johnny Knoxville. He did better than I think most people would have expected and or given him credit. Did. Not him. Not him. Not him. Definitely not him. But I think Sami Zayn... You know, it, it, when we talk about the idea of an MVP in WWE, there's not a clear criteria other than the idea of, like, who do the fans most want to see. Realistically, Sammy has been that since the Thunderdome. Sammy was doing great stuff. And I know you didn't like the, fin- the whole Fidel Castro thing. I know. No, I know. Great Liberator? I was I know. not a fan of that. But in ring and his promo, especially when he started doing the conspiracy Zane and he thought that everyone was working against him because he kept losing. <laughs> it was really good. Sami Zayn has always had that ability to be really good. He's like Daniel Bryan. I like just the fans love him no matter what. Even though I have I've jumped on the bandwagon. I jumped on late, but I wasn't all for Sami Zayn until I, I whenever I watched some of his NXT stuff. I can see why. The marks love him so much. Like, if yeah. I saw that Sami Zayn at first, I would have also fallen up. But my first experience with Sami Zayn was Great Liberator Sami Zayn. Specifically, if I remember right, your very, very first one was his match against Daniel Bryan in the Thunderdome, where Drew Gulak was on the outside. <laughs> I believe. And I mean, it wasn't that bad of a match, but no, no one should have to have their first experience to a wrestler with no crowd. That's just my opinion. But, you know... I I don't know if this is necessarily fair to say, but Sami Zayn, to me, made the bloodline worth going an extra year. 100%. Even last year, Roman was already getting kind of stale, and it was getting to the point where it was like, all right, dude, I get it. This has been the greatest storyline in WWE in a long, long time. Oh, definitely. Especially main roster. There are some Ken Tenders on the NXT Black and Gold era, like, for Marks, of course. I'm sure you guys are already thinking of examples. I was a big fan of the Aleister Black, Johnny Gargano feud that I happened. Say Tomasi, Trump, that was awesome. Johnny that's the that's the obvious one. Everyone <laughs> everyone thought of that one. But Aleister Except Black had a cool because one. I only saw a few because I don't ever I don't even know who that is. <laughs> that's what you sound like. Because Johnny Gargano is a vanilla midget. Exactly. Shout and out JBL. JBL, if you're listening, <laughs> give us a follow. But let's be real about the storyline. Sami Zayn coming in, the are you feeling oozy, getting himself over so naturally, and a lot of the acting abilities, it's almost overshadowed how good Sami also is as a wrestler because yeah. he's done so good with his character. And because he didn't get in the ring for, uh, for a lot of it whenever he was... He didn't need to. He was yeah. the hype man. He got over by being the hype man. Yeah, and that was really That's cool. hard to do. It was really cool seeing each week how whatever he would say... It would crack up the Usos and uh, Roman, and then they would have to hide their face. <laughs> it, it made it really fun to watch those segments. Yeah. When you see the wrestlers having fun, or when you can tell they're having fun, I think that makes it more fun for us yeah, as fans. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, don't get me wrong, I think Solo's awesome. I think they've protected Solo really well. And Solo so could really not good. have saved the bloodline and made it interesting the way Sammy did. No, yeah, I agree. So, with that in mind, I, I really do get why this would be the main event. Sammy has definitely earned a main event. I mean, it's the biggest storyline of the last... Year. How many, how many years of main roster storytelling have we gone through to get this diamond? Let's be honest. The Bloodline started in 2020 SummerSlam. So, we're close to three years of this storyline. And... Really, it kind of ran its course at Backlash last year when it was the uh, uh, 3v3 Bloodline versus RK Bro and Drew McIntyre. A really overrated match. <laughs> like, I wasn't excited going into it. I still don't like it. That's not important. We can do a watch along one day. I still think the Bloodline day. still has another year. 
I okay, the bloodline could have another year, but not without you... losing. Oh yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. So that's true. this gets a little bit into our predictions, but I don't see how the bloodline story has anywhere to go if all three retain. Now I don't know who will lose, or if but I will lose. exactly maybe no one will. But I just if they all still have the titles, I don't know who's left to face them. Yeah. I don't know what reason they would have to implode against each other. I don't know why you would ever have the implications or the reasonings of Heyman going to someone else. It, it falls apart. It's like how you say it's like you build them up so high you destroy your rest of your roster basically if you, yeah if you do if, it that way if cody loses you better be able to bring in the rock because <laughs> romans beat everyone else yeah. unless you were turning judgment day face and balor's riding again but last time that that happened he broke the ring when he was the demon and egg can't hold a championship according to yeah the i don't that's whatever <laughs> edge could at least challenge for it but he even Ro- romans even beat him Oh, he he literally stacked Edge on top of Daniel Bryan and pinned them both at the same time. Nice. Or if CM Punk comes back, that would be an interesting swerve, especially with him being in LA. I you think, know what's in LA this weekend? <laughs> what? I think if CM Punk's coming back, it's going to be more so to f- be a heel. I think it should be honestly. He's, yeah, he's better as a heel. Well, he's better as a heel just in general. But let's. Oh, you like him so much. I know. I love CM Punk, so you hate him. <laughs> but let's jump into our official predictions. You know, when the actual storyline hit its crescendo and Sammy turned on Roman, I was confused. Because the story for so long was Sammy and Jay. Yeah. It was never Sammy and Roman. That's why I didn't understand the and call it- for Sammy to be the one to beat Roman. Because the story has not been about Sammy and Roman. But they've done a good job of clearing up that confusion, I think, in the last few weeks, especially with Jay taking his little hiatus and coming out and hugging Sammy and all that, and then... Turn, choosing his family yeah. over the person that cared about him more. And then Sammy talking to him about how he wasn't man enough to do what he did. It's really showed... Because I was confused, too. I was like, why do people want Sammy Zane to... I mean, I was not confused about that, but I was confused about what you said about the Jay Uso because I wanted Sammy Zayn to beat Roman, but um, it just felt like it they've is... been, they've done a good job of not salvaging it, but just explaining it, clearing up, clarifying some things. I think is the better term. I think that's a good way to say it. I think with getting back on track of Sammy and Jay, I do not think there is a logical step in the story without Jay being defeated. Yeah. So, with that being said, Sami Zayn's my official prediction. I think Sami Zayn will pin Jay Uso after a Haluva kick. But I have noticed Kevin Owens has been acting a little weird. Yeah. It's, so, it's almost one. like they're already planting the seeds of a breakup, but I don't I don't know why that would be unless it's going to happen at Mania. It's weird the whole like the it almost felt too rushed. I, I think a lot of these stories have kind of felt rushed for me, but um, the put together of Sammy and KO, I wish they would have done it like almost immediately whenever Sammy stood up to Roman. But um, I get why they didn't. I get you yeah, know, I Sammy too. being on his own, but when KO came out and, and saved still- Sammy at Elimination Chamber, but still for five weeks didn't want to team up with him. Yeah. And then when he did team up with him, all it took was Sammy being like, I want to be your friend. Yeah. And then they were like, that's it. Bring it in, man. I'm not not only using you to beat the bloodline. I want to be your friend again. (laughs) I want to be your friend and then use you to beat the bloodline. So, I mean, I guess I I could kind of see KO turning on Sammy in the match and the Usos winning. And I think if the Usos did win, that opens up a lot of narrative what ifs and questions about night two to make it more interesting if the usos win yeah if the uh, usos yeah. win i yeah. think it makes it a lot more plausible about roman winning which makes yeah. it a lot more interesting to yeah. a lot of fans yeah so i mean i could kind of see it but if ko and Sami Zayn aren't breaking up which i don't think they will 
they've just put some weird seeds about it. And I think that might just be because they know that the history between KO and Sami Zayn. But yeah, haven't they already run that storyline? Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. So I think with that in mind, I'm going to stick with Sami and KO winning, Sami pinning Jay. And then maybe at the Saudi show, we build to a three on three. Oh no, Sammy can't be at the Saudi shows. <laughs> Wait, why can't he be at the Saudi shows? All right. <laughs> um, I guess we'll get into my predictions now. Uh, and this is basically all off of my fantasy booking and what I want to happen in my own head. I want Sami Zayn and KO to win, obviously. And I want them to have their nice brotherly hug in the ring and everything. And just, the, I think the Usos need to take a little break afterwards and not show up at all, not even be there or anything for night two. And then have Roman basically showing that he is losing his tribe, how Cody Rhodes had said. And I guess, is Solo going to be with Roman on night You would two? assume so, gotcha. but it's not confirmed. Okay. Um, but to show that Roman is losing his tribe and just plant the seeds that, wow, Roman actually could lose this thing. That he, did, he that the Usos have already lost and that the bloodline is actually crumbling. And that's how I think that it should end. But I guess we'll continue to go to the next match to see about Charlotte and Rhea. And that'll bring us to our last match to discuss. Again, this may not be the main event. Uh, we just kind of went by the card that was released by WB and worked our way backwards on it. But we've got Rhea Ripley challenging for the SmackDown Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair. Rhea Ripley winning the Royal Rumble, of course, from the number one position. Incredible performance. I loved that Royal Rumble. I, thought I, it, I think it was better than the men's, personally. I did too, honestly. Her biting the boot at the end. That it was a really good <laughs> shot. Her bleeding... I think the, uh, would be the Liv, the which, was Royal Rumble. oh, almost definitely, Liv getting the poison mist. We're not <laughs> here to talk about the Rumble. It was good. I think we already had a yeah, uh, we had a special co-host on and did a review of that. That's on the channel. Feel free to check it out. But more importantly, that was when I did the one with uh, Working uh, Made Designs. But more importantly, let's look at this match. Uh, Story-wise, and what's the build to it, really all you need to know is that Charlotte won the Rumble a couple of years ago and used it to win the NXT Championship from Rhea at WrestleMania. It was a good match. Probably didn't need Charlotte to win it. That was, Vince Why? really wanted Charlotte to win. Why did she go after Rhea? Just because play? Rhea was like, you're afraid to. And then she yeah. was like, I'm not afraid of anyone. Don't mm -hmm. say I'm afraid. Is that That's the whole story. Ripley? Yeah, yeah. Nice. That was a cool one. She did like a Dragon Ball Z attire. You literally watched it. The review <laughs> is on the channel. So, let's keep that in mind as we move sure forward. how much I care about NXT. There you go. <laughs> uh, this match literally is just that Rhea's back. She's ready now. Personally, You're I think that... Back. Literally, that's it. I, I really, really think this would have been a stronger story or a stronger feud... If Rhea would have gone against Bianca and Oscar would have gone against Charlotte, I, agree. I don't really know why they didn't do that. I don't know. I guess because I really I feel think like the it's Bianca to get and Oscar is not really the greatest build up either. And but, we'll talk about that yeah. in tomorrow's episode a little bit more. But I, I really think, and I don't know. Maybe this is gonna sound controversial when I say this. I don't care about either of the matches. I just think that they want Rhea to go to SmackDown because the SmackDown roster for women kind of sucks. Yeah, and Ronda's been hurt and everything like Ronda's that. Ronda's been hurt, and then you've got Charlotte, and that's that's your stars. Where's Liv? I thought Liv was on. No, she's on SmackDown, uh, but, I, you know, like I said, stars. <laughs> I don't count cheeks. I don't <laughs> count cheeks just as being a star. Well, you don't know good ring work, then. <laughs> So, there's not a lot to talk about in terms of the story. It's just kind of disappointing. Like, I was so excited whenever Rhea won the Royal Rumble, and I just... I was excited specifically because I was like, oh my god, we're going to get Rhea versus Bianca. Yeah, I remember whenever she called out Charlotte, you're like, she, there's no way she didn't call out Charlotte. This is going to suck. Like, uh, <laughs> I, like that, it blew my mind. It still does, to be honest. I think that's a big money match to do Bianca versus Rhea. Yeah. If anything, I think I would have even preferred... 
Bianca versus Charlotte to let Bianca keep fighting four horsewomen and like getting through all of them because she's beaten three of the four. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, she beat Sasha at Mania, she beat Becky uh, at Mania, she beat Bailey at Survivor Series, which I mean that, that she buried the fuck out of Bailey. <laughs> so I think yeah, it I cool. think it would have been cool for her to go against Charlotte, but I don't know. I mean I just I don't see you get what you serve and you'll like it. Literally, literally. <laughs> I just don't see Charlotte and Rhea being a better match than Bianca and Rhea would have been. I Especially think it'll, I think Bianca's it'll be a kind good of match. turned it. No, I don't, I'm not saying it won't be a good match. I'm sure it will be. It's just fine. not very exciting to me. And to me, it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, and there's no way that, to me at least, that Rhea's going to lose. I it, look. I said the same thing about Ronda last year, and then she lost <laughs> to a big boot. So it's possible, man. It's definitely possible. You think Dom Dom's going to come out with her? Nah, no. Nah. Especially with them both having matches, I think they'll wow. come out separate. I would like Rhea to have some kind of special entrance. I think she, you know, definitely has deserved it. And I think, you know, she's still kind of goth and spooky with Judgment Day, so there's a lot of cool stuff they yeah. could do. Come out with a tricycle. Yeah, Triple yeah, that'd be H, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more like... You know Triple H has got to make his appearance on a motorcycle. God, I hope so. (laughs) Be over the key. I don't know. It's just... This match... I think Rhea has earned a WrestleMania main event. I do too. But I do not think Charlotte is the person to have it against. I don't think this build-up for this match should be main event. But uh, you put a seed in my head that it will be. And Sammy won't get his main event moment. It, I feel like both Rhea and Sammy deserve it. And I'm not necessarily someone that's like... You heard that Roman going to the opener. All right, that's fair. <laughs> I'm not necessarily someone that needs... Like, well, if they don't do Rhea, then they're sexist. And if they don't do Sammy, then they don't care about the fan. <laughs> like, there's way... There's so much to it to consider. Yeah. It's just hard to imagine this match closing the show because it doesn't have the emotional stakes i just really think Rhea deserves to close the show winning the title yeah it'll be a cool shot and everything whenever she does or if she does i guess but i just i really can't imagine Rhea losing this match she's been built to look like a freaking monster now quick like, shout really, out she to she really looks like china Sorry, yeah she does play it no you're fine she plays it well, and I think that she feels, from what I've seen, she feels very, like, honored to draw that comparison. Right. Because, like, China was a groundbreaker, man. Yeah. And it's weird to go back to the commentary and hear him talk about China, but, like, if you ignore Jerry Lawler being weird, <laughs> it's great. Because she, she wasn't she wasn't fantastic in the ring, but there was nothing like that at the time. you imagine Jerry Lawler with Liv Morgan? Oh, brother. <laughs> but... Uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out because I wanted to ask or pick your brain about something as a more casual fan. Uh, anyone that's watching our TikToks or listening to us on the YouTube podcast, you guys go ahead and check out Raw Impact Radio. It's a great podcast run by Masir Blackston. He also does live watch alongs for the majority of WB shows. Very entertaining guy. Definitely plays heel a lot. I love him. But like him too if he plays heel. He does play heel a lot. Or maybe I'll play the extra heel. And oh turn. no, <laughs> double heel turn. Uh, he made an interesting point about Charlotte recently. It's like she, she's like Superman, where it's like, ah, you beat me, but I'm still smiling, and I beat you back even worse. You know, like. She came back right away after losing to Ronda, and as soon as she did, got a title match right away, yeah. beat her right away. Now she's the champion. Sonya can't touch her. Even when Sonya jumps over from behind, Charlotte gets the upper hand and everything like that. And then even when they had their pull-apart brawl, when Rhea got the cheap shot, Charlotte still ended up looking the one yeah. tall because Rhea's getting pulled away. Now, maybe that's a way to try and make it where it's like, oh my god, they both look so strong leading into this, but... I don't know. I think Charlotte's getting a little boring. Some people say Bianca's this kind of John Cena figure. I think Charlotte is far just, more where she wins way too much I was about to say and her character like doesn't Cena. change. <laughs> it doesn't matter if Charlotte's a face, a heel. It doesn't matter if she's... Who is the face and heel in this match? I can't even tell. 
so it's an interesting thing because I think the crowd is 100% going to be behind Rhea. Yeah. But Rhea is, on paper, the heel. Right. So I'm thinking that they will play up to that. Jack the show. I think they will call the audible in the match you know, like and John let them Cena play it. One night stand. Yes. Gotcha. And I think I think that would make it a better match. I do too. If it is where Rhea's got the heat and Charlotte's just getting beat down and she tries to come back, that crowd's just going to be like, no. What do you think they'll do with the Judgment Day? You think you Rhea will still be a part of Judgment Day? You think Judgment Day will turn face or? I think. Or? I don't think Rhea will turn face from the match. Oh, I think the crowd will. From the yeah. WrestleMania crowd. I think the crowd think will de like facto Hollywood, make Hulk her Hogan a face. I hope not, <laughs> because Hollywood Hogan and The Rock, when they did decide to officially turn him face the next night, ended all of the momentum that Hollywood Hogan as an NWO leader could have had. What do you mean? They kicked him out of the NWO. They turned oh. him face. They gave him a really bad WWE title run, and then the NWO basically died a slow, painful death. Basically, uh, it was almost Edge whenever they turned him face. Whenever they panicked, whenever Cody got hurt. Kind of, except they didn't give Edge the world title and also yeah. book him sparingly. Gotcha. But that's besides the point. <laughs> I think after this, my official prediction for the match is Rhea Ripley winning, and hopefully afterwards, Rhea and Dom alone will go to SmackDown. Yeah. And then Balor and Priest will stay on Raw, and hopefully they're like they're still friendly with each other. You know, right. It's not like the Judgment Day is breaking they up. Still acknowledge they're still acknowledge They're satellite members of right. one another. And then I would like to see someone added to the Judgment Day Ooh, to cool. work with Damien. And I think, leading into SummerSlam, we'll talk about this more tomorrow, but if Balor looks good in his match against Edge, I think he could be that first huge hurdle for a babyface Cody Rhodes champion. Yeah. If Cody Rhodes becomes champion. I'd like to see uh, Damian Priest get to some mid-card action, personally. I would, too. It's just that I think the mid-card has so many people that are directionless. Yeah. There's not a lot that he can do storyline-wise other than the mid-card title. So you want him to be in, like, the tag team? I would like to see him in a tag division with someone that could use a little bit of elevation. Chad Gable. Maybe someone <laughs> else. Maybe someone else. I'm thinking like an NXT call-up. Uh, Maybe Cameron Grimes. That might be Grayson cool for him. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's getting into fantasy booking. <laughs> and we can do a separate video on that if there's call for it from the audience. I think it'll be a really good overall night one, though. I do, too. And I think it's going to leave me craving more for night two with Roman. I definitely hope so. And obviously, I'm going to be watching NXT Stand and Deliver too. And I think NXT Stand and Deliver is going to have me already so jazzed up that going into that first match of Theory versus Cena, I think the whole night's going to, to me, be five stars. So yeah. we might have to take a little bit of time after to come back and do our review just to not come in with such like, wow, can you believe, <laughs> insert whoever wins the world title match, here won it. The greatest... <laughs> WrestleMania of all time. <laughs> Give us a little time to digest it. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you can't get into the uh, pool movie. after you eat. Uh, I was going to say movie review. I did used to make that mistake where I'd review <laughs> movies right after. But that was on the old Cray Cray Vlogs <laughs> channel. And with that, we're going to call... Wait, did you make your official prediction? I just said Rhea can't lose. So yeah, okay, yeah. Rhea. So, let us know yours in the comments. Uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube, be sure to check out the TikTok. If you're watching this on the TikTok, be sure to check out the YouTube. And if you liked it, go ahead and like it. Or yeah, leave a like. Make sure you subscribe. We're hoping to get the channel more active, including a lot more of YouTube shorts. That seems to be kind of the way to grow this channel so and that we can have a little bit more consistent. In general. So, we're hoping to do that. And maybe the Omos Cinematic Universe <laughs> will find its way here on YouTube. And leave your predictions down below. We want to hear what you guys think. Tell us if we're idiots or tell us if you agree. And with that, and genius. We're going to be on tomorrow doing night two, so be sure you come back and check that out. Everyone have a good weekend. Enjoy WrestleMania or Ring of Honor be or safe. NXT. Whatever you're watching, man. I'm going to be drunk, so I don't care. <laughs>